Yeah, the purpose of my research is actually to uh, develop uh, monitoring tools and um, <clears throat> and uh, give to community currency systems such kind of uh, possibility to uh, stabilize themselves as a currency system, but also uh, how um, one of my research question is how can we use community currency system to stabilize the entire economic system? Because uh, uh, one of my research hypotheses is that community currency systems, systems are not just good for the members, but uh, they have there is some side effect on the uh, on the whole economic system. And um, I wanted to share with you just a few slides. Uh, I hope <laughs> it won't be too boring. C can you see my slides? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so basically, um, so basically today I want to see just, I, want to, I wanted to say just a few things about uh, uh, one of the main concepts uh, uh, that I'm trying to, to study and analyze in uh, community currency systems, and it is cyclic motives. Now I will explain what motive means. Um, but uh, what is important to say is that these uh, cyclic motives, so let's say cyclic patterns, may be related to uh, the income distribution, the price dynamics, and the resilience of uh, the whole economic system. Um, Okay, so um, just a few uh, words to um, explain very simple to explain uh, what I'm talking about in very simple words. So uh, I'm I'm a network scientist. So my PhD is in network science. So what, so what we study is network. In this case, the transaction network. And when we talk about the network, we can just think about a set of nodes and links, where the links are the transaction that the users uh, daily do. Um, another, another concept I have to stress out is the subgraph, or uh, let's say subnetwork, that is a part of the network, so a subset of the network, which includes um, part of the nodes and the links of the original, original network. And a motive is a subgraph that repeats over time. And uh, we have statistical um, there are statistical methods that we can use in order to infer the importance of uh, of this subgraph or this subnetwork. And um, uh, for instance, here you can see uh, tried significance profile. This was from a, from a, from another paper in which the authors were trying to uh, estimate, let's say, the importance of uh, each motive. In this case, uh, you can see here the number of motive. Uh, you have uh, this motive number one, number two, number three. All of these are motive of length three because they involve um, three nodes. Uh, so why cyclic motives are important? So here I just try to summarize a bit the literature we have um, about motives and uh, about uh, Mm, cyclic motives in particular. Um, in this case, you can see in this image, um, I, we can call this economy, it's a direct, directed acidic graph economy. Why? Because there are no, there are no cycles here. As you can see, uh, let's, let's assume that we start with uh, an, economy, an economy with just three nodes, A, B, and C. Um, this is called also open triad or uh, also tree, tree like stru structure and uh, in this case there are no there are no cycles uh, uh, what happened that in this kind of economy is uh, is actually really really unstable so usually uh, you you can find a redistributor that can be a bank or can be uh, the state which try to um, to move the surplus that the node c is going to accumulate and to reinvest this, ar this surplus, and uh, how in and uh, yeah, we can uh, we we can have uh, downstream upstream investments, or we can uh, have uh, another investment that try to create another path. So in this case, for instance, we can see that uh, B is actually 
the the node with the, um, that is the broker of this economy, and then we we, we can uh, the distributor in this case let's say this bank uh, want to invest um, to the creation of uh, a new node B prime in order to have another uh, path in this case, but still in this economy there is no cycle. And uh, what we will observe is that there is a price effect. So we will see that uh, there is a, uh, an increasing um, level of price at the beginning. Then we can see also an income effect because there is these uh, transactions that move from a node A to the node C. Uh, and this is a, a typical example of a, a cyclic graph economy. So in this, in this kind of uh, economy, uh, we can observe an increasing performance at individual level, but also uh, at systemic level. And, um, and uh, this is an amazing paper and that uh, was co-authored also by Giuseppe, and it is actually about Sardex. And this was the first paper um, that really opened my mind um, because they tested this uh, kind of uh, positive effect uh, on, uh, on the economy. And uh, Sardex as a mutual credit is actually designed to uh, boost cyclic motives in an economic system. So the positive effect is not just for the Sardex people or the Sardex users, but there is also a side effect, positive side effect on the overall economy. Um, okay, this is just uh, some uh, random theory, but just to say that uh, uh, the fact that uh, this performance, we, we observed this performance, increasing performance is just is actually uh, based on game theory uh, studies um, that uh, it's so it's possible to prove that uh, this kind of cycle are actually linked to uh, an increased stability and increased efficiency of the economics of the economic network. Um, okay, this is another, in these slides, um, I just reported uh, uh, partially uh, what is the main object of my research. So I'm trying to understand uh, how we can study more these cyclic motives. And um, so I try to create different uh, categories. So white cyclic motive or black cyclic motive in order to understand uh, uh, what is the, um, the impact how they are linked these motives to the rest of the economy so for instance a white motive is a motive that for which the input the input is less than the output of the motive itself in terms of uh, transaction values and uh, in, the, in the case of black motive is the opposite so the input is bigger than uh, the output of the motive um, just a few words about uh, the fact that uh, we can also study the presence of black and white star because black and white star, uh, as you can as you can see here in the in the plot, um, can be also related to uh, stability and efficiency of uh, of a network. Uh, just few steps. Uh, or my next steps in my research will be, uh, uh, as I said, to improve the, this algorithm to study the flow motives and how these flow motives can be used to improve and monitor and eventually um, provide some correction to, uh, to any transaction network and, and of course, in any community currency network. And the other, the other branch of research that is really promising uh, is how can uh, this community currency be used in order to stabilize the entire economic system? So at the moment, uh, I am planning to, to work better with, with uh, Sardex and uh, I already start, started to work uh, uh, a bit with the grassroots economics and uh, the Serafo network. And yeah, for the moment, I think I said everything. Thank you.